Gruesome Magazine. Hello once again, I'm Doc Rotten and this is Gruesome Magazine, where we review the very latest in theatrical streaming and video on demand horror movies. Each week, my co-host Christopher G. Moore and Brian W. Smith and I will take a look at very spooky, scary, and gory genre offerings. Tonight, we are reviewing Sick. Streaming now on Peacock of all places. Peacock. All right. Joining me this week is award-winning filmmaker Christopher G. Moore. How you doing, sir? I forgot to wear my mask during this podcast. Am I gonna be okay? You'll be fine. You're gonna be okay. fine. Get out of here. Making sure. No. Just making sure. <laughs> uh, I did wipe my microphone down with the... <laughs> and your cereal box. All right. Also joining us is award-winning screenwriter. Brian W. Smith. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. I'm starting to get a little uh, sniffles, but, you know, it should be fine. It should be okay. <laughs> just, just keep six <laughs> feet away from your microphone. There you go. <laughs> it's not going to come through them. Come through with it. Do I need to? <laughs> yeah, it's going to be like the COVID in the Matrix. Yeah. Uh, Interactive. If you haven't yeah. figured it out, uh, six takes place during the, uh, the pandemic, right at the beginning of it. Um, Accurately so, I might suggest. Yes. That's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so anyway, we are going uh, to start off giving you our first impressions of the film, and that will be spoiler-free. There are spoilers in this one. Then we'll talk about the film. We will get into spoilers then, so if you haven't seen it, you know, hold up after that. And then we'll wrap things up with our score, one to five, and our favorite scene. And we hope you enjoy not only this review, but many others that we have on the site. And if you do, please hit the like, subscribe, and share with a friend and help us reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers. Yes. Only you can help us do that. All right, let's get to the card. Get into it. All right, sick. It's uh, from Blumhouse and Miramax. That's a weird pairing, but uh, yeah. Available on Peacock beginning January 13th, 2023. Synopsis, due to the pandemic, Parker and her best friend decide to quarantine at the family lake house alone. Or so they think. It's directed by John Iams. It's written by Kevin Williamson and Caitlin Crabb. The cast includes Gideon Adlon, Bethlehem Million, Dylan Sprayberry, Joel Courtney, Mark Menchaca, is that right? Uh, and Jane Adams. An a, a interesting cast, just to say the least. All right, let's get into our first impressions. And Brian, I would like for you to be first. You're always surprised. Uh, I do it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, sick. Yeah, I'll, I'll start with the you know the good. I thought it was uh, it's a competently directed slasher film. Uh, you know they do a pretty good job of sort of uh, I wouldn't say poking fun, but sort of reflecting a lot of the uh, the norms that we we fell into during the the COVID and lockdown, and you know. The, the, in terms of like safety and masks and distance and all that sort of stuff. So it's, it's in there, it's baked in there. Um, some good, you know, cinematography, some good uh, chase moments and stuff. I, I would say the film is essentially, once it gets going, it's essentially a, the big chase scene of a, of a slasher film for, but it's a feature length version of that. Yeah, um, it is. It's almost entirely that. <laughs> it's, it's entirely the big chase scene basically. Uh, but it's, it's fine. I could see how it would, you know, do well mostly on i i can see why it went streaming uh, if, if anything but uh the performances are fine the you know the twists are what they are it's 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 fine You're, it's kevin williamson he's sort of diving back into the well of of the scream i know what he did last summer uh you know his success with that but um you know my only gripe with that is that it's it's very it's very serious it's uh it could use a little extra levity just to for repeat viewing i mean i've seen it twice mostly for this review but it's ultimately kind of like a one and done type of film. You go through it once and it's like, okay. And then, uh, you know, I start again just to see it for this review, but it, it's fine. I, I would say go ahead and check it out, but that's, that's, it's, it's a little more than a meh, but it was fine. It was <laughs> a little more meh plus. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll get it to, yeah, we'll get it to the spoilers and, and, you know, how you have to suspend disbelief and things, but, you know. There you go. Christopher G. Moore, what was your first impression of Sick? <laughs> I will say without spoiling, the very end end, I did laugh out loud, but that's maybe yeah. what happened. <laughs> uh, yeah. and maybe they meant for that. Um, I, I, I'll say the, um, I, I, I kind of really enjoyed the concept 
that was created around this without spoiling anything. I like the concept of it, especially with the, when we find out how it plays out. I like kind of like that, even though it's a little bit out there. Um, I, I thought some of the filmmaking was pretty amazing and just how they're showing because there's a lot of um, like very hidden cuts especially that opening scene when he's uh, when that guy, when a person is being attacked, there's an opening scene where a guy gets attacked and, and the way they do the hidden cuts, the camera is almost like it's always, it's almost like done almost like one long cut in, in scenes, but there's hidden cuts with him like going in front of the camera. I thought uh, to sort of map that out choreography wise is really well done. And then they do a little bit of that uh, in parts of the film as well. Um, but yeah, it, it's, it's, it's pretty simplistic, I guess, other than the, the big, uh, underlying concept of it. It's pretty simplistic. And I, I will say, uh, more than recent films, I yelled out, I yelled at the character so much <laughs> I love it. in this film. Cause I'm like, find a weapon, find a weapon, <laughs> find a weapon. <laughs> Why are you not still finding a weapon? <laughs> if you're being attacked multiple times, find a find freaking a weapon. weapon. Find a weapon. And I just kept getting mad at this character. You got you, it's like there doesn't <laughs> you guys deserve to die because <laughs> you're not finding a weapon. You know, and, and don't <laughs> but I don't know. And and, and uh, yeah, and, and there's the yeah. I mean, I will say there's one weapon I kept saying, use that weapon, then use it, and then, and then it becomes a, a Chekhov's thing later. Um, but yep. uh, but I will say, it, I I mean, I, I thought the characters were okay and good. Um, and I think um, they had certain reasonings why certain situations would happen that would seem creepier, but they might not be towards the beginning. Um and I, I think I think really the true horror is just having to reflect back to those times where we had to oh live through God, the, the early pandemic stuff. I remember getting having groceries delivered and wiping down all my groceries. I remember that time. You know, I just remember that people getting annoyed. The toilet that. paper. They do yeah, the I mean, paper. I still get times where somebody coughs in a store, and I go, "Oh, I did that the other day when I was in the movie theater." Somebody like, "Oh." <laughs> don't no, cough near no. me um so I, I really felt that that was the true horror having to reflect the actual reality of us having to live through that so i i'm so i think i think that kind of works well with the the horror of the situation um i mean i did i i did like a there's like a uh the the, the twisty part i'll say mm -hmm. i kind of like that because i was not expecting that um, but I did like the twist and, and the whole reasoning behind why these things are happening. I thought that was a kind of cool thing without giving anything away. Um, I enjoyed it. Um, and, uh, I, I, I just kept getting overly annoyed with the characters being stupid characters. I mean, at some point you just like, it, it, and then people, and there's just times where people would just stare, you know what I mean? And I, I hate that. Maybe I, I know the horror films would probably end like 20 minutes in if the characters uh, actually did what they need to do. Cause, but it just, I just kept getting mad <laughs> at these characters. Like, what are you getting doing? Mad. Why are you, I, I, I was like yelling. I was like, why are you standing there? Why are you standing there? Why don't you get a weapon? Why don't you get a weapon? Why are you standing there? <laughs> just, so I, 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 to me, that was the most frustrating a aspect of it, but I still enjoyed it. Um, and I, I, I really thought that, the concept was actually kind of was kind of cool once you figure out what why all this stuff is happening at least for me uh, <laughs> no that's perfect that's perfect i okay so i have pros and cons to this movie um i do think i i wondered as well brian you know should could this have been a theatrical film and i think it could have been but i um it may play better streaming but it it's it's on it's I've seen worse films in the theater, so it definitely is good enough to make the cut to be in a theater if it wanted to be. And there's worse films on streaming too. Well, definitely on streaming. Um, and there's well, there's better movies on streaming as well. But anyway, I, um, I so th there was some, there was some. I thought it was derivative of 
his own freaking work. I mean, right. Kevin Kevin Williams is kind of retreading his own ground. It's there's a little bit of Scream One and Scream Two in this, um, from the structure to some of the concepts uh, buried, you know, under the surface, uh, which are fine. It's not so derivative that it undermines it. Uh, but I was just kind of noticing it, you know, just kind of like, Ooh, okay, that opening, you know, it's a little like Scream kind of thing. Come on get a little better uh so i thought it, i don't think it's his best work as a writer but i do think it's the best work as the director i think john hyams who this dude does a lot of tv shows he does like z nation and, and stuff like that but he did a movie called alone which also has mark manchaka in it is it do i am i saying his name right <laughs> manchaka uh but it it we that was really well done but this i really think he did a great job directing this um there, there, there were, I, I wrote down in my notes, damn, that's a nice transition. Didn't write down what the transition was and I can't remember it, but I noted down that there was a nice transition and it might be the same thing you were talking about early on, Christopher, because it was early well, there, in the there, movie that I wrote that nice transition. There's a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of kinetic filmmaking in this, in mm. this, uh, in this movie and stuff. And I think, um, and I, I think to me, that's, that's, that's the standout parts, you know? Yeah. You could, it's very, um, yeah, it's very tropish. It's, it, it definitely steals from a lot of his previous stuff. You know, yep. you even have just a knife that feels like it was stolen from the screen Maybe. guy. Uh, but I will say regardless, regardless, in the end, I actually had a really good time with this. And I actually enjoyed it quite a bit and would recommend it. I think it is a very effective slasher film, um, an old school kind of slasher film, right? And it it works in that respect. And plus the, the whole mask aspect. Um, which feels kind of like you're, you know, like kind of uh, taking advantage of that at the beginning, you know, to kind of trigger us, but it actually becomes important to the story uh, and to a very ingenious twist um, that I, I was, wasn't really expecting that, how that played out. But um, I, yeah. So in the end, I liked it. I'd recommend it. And I'm excited to hear what we have to say during our spoiler section, which starts now. <laughs> I, I, Chris mentioned the uh, kinetic direction, which I, I really appreciate because there, I've seen so many films over the years where, you know, a, a chase sequence, it's like, I want to be in the chase scene. I want to be part of it. And this, they fall, you know, they, they zoom that camera and follow the, the runners. It's, it's like they're running for their lives. The killer's running. So I appreciated the adrenaline aspect of it. That was really fun. Um, the characters themselves didn't, I, I didn't necessarily find them as endearing or appealing as you know some of his other work, right. but um, I think that's what kind of made it. Where you, where you say it's derivative, I, I can see that. Um, I'm glad I didn't know the the. I didn't know much about this film. I knew briefly of it, but I didn't really read up or, or see any trailers. Uh, the fact that the, mo the spoiler the the mastermind behind the whole thing uh, name is Pamela. So I was like, mm. okay, I know I know right away. <laughs> Like it's like okay, so this is just a pitch for the Crystal Lake movie, the, the Crystal Lake show. I'm kidding, but it's uh, it was like her name was Pamela, her husband's name was Jason. Oh my was, god! Yeah, it was just sort of like I didn't even put that together. It's that's yeah, really it was like right away. I was like, okay, I, it's cute, but you know, it's like, ugh. but yeah, the it makes up for it. I do appreciate a good uh, comeuppance for the killers, and I think they all got some good comeuppances in this one. I was, wasn't expecting the twist initially when Parker take, takes out the first one. Cause you don't, you don't, you just assume there's just one killer. I was like, Oh, where's this going? There's still like a half hour left. Yep. Um, and then, you know, it just reveals that there's, there's more than one. So I thought that was interesting. Um, Which is yeah, shades of scream, right? So there's shades of scream there and the reveal right. is shades of scream too. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. The mom, the you know, the killer is just coming out of left field. That's I know what you did last summer, so I had that sort of Lois Duncan like, eh, we'll just throw the ending, we'll just throw it at you at the last minute and explain it all. Um, but it did, you know, I could see that's you know, you could see the the reasoning behind it and you know, people were a little nuts during the pandemic and, and even now. So, you know, it's 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 got that plausibility to it. And you start questioning Parker as a final girl, as as the as our protagonist, it's like, huh, you know, she has questionable morals at that time, and we all know people that were like that during the you know pandemic, or was like just sort of sh you know shitting on it and just not saying, oh, we're not taking it seriously, that type of thing. So that was an interesting take on it. It's that 
it's not you know don't do drugs or sex or anything like that it's like don't don't go to a covid party and infect people and stuff like that. so it was it was interesting it was like uh, it's like the new era of that that type of uh movie scene, yeah, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do we like Mark Mancheca and Manchaka and Jane Adams as as Jason and Pamela? Do we I, I thought they were great. They were fine. I thought Jane was fine. Well especially with the twist scene with Jane yeah, in the car because yeah. that's in the trailer and you think oh she's just gonna be I didn't recognize her at first. I just figured she was just going to be some, you know, I thought she was a random, she was a random daughter, character. Right. Yeah, yeah. yeah she's going to be Not a rando to die. Yeah, so that that got me when I saw it. I was like, oh, interesting. And then, you know, because the body count isn't that high. No, no, it's more about the the style and this. You know, I, there's some cool like suspenseful. Well, shot. there's a there's a really interesting shot with a poker. Oh, poker. <laughs> well, I I kept thinking, yeah. what what would have happened if they did that COVID test and she came up negative? Oh man, just the mean, whole thing would have oops, been sorry. for not. <laughs> right, right. You know, I, I don't know. I, I I mean, I I do I do think the whole COVID thing was actually kind of. I mean, I don't think now I don't think anybody could do that storyline now because it's it, that that's probably the most sort of original aspect of it. I think because um, you know. We've, I think we all knew that, like, oh crap, we're gonna see so many COVID movies, some stuff about COVID, you know. But I think, I think, uh, sort of wrapping that in the burrito of a slasher film kind of worked. Yeah, I was. It's the strongest point because I think because the whole time we're like, why is this happening? And then just once you realize it, then it makes perfect sense earlier on in the very opening scene when he's like, are you vaccinated? He's like, and he's did the slang of none of your fucking business or whatever. And now you realize was you know, he, was, he wasn't vaccinated. Right. <laughs> and that, that makes, but, um, but yeah, I, I, I like that aspect of it. But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I, I think uh, to me, it's just the, the, uh, the, the characters just, <laughs> I mean, granted, the one character was cool. And, I mean, she didn't figure out a way to wrap her leg up and stuff. But I just, I just the whole thing of like, you just knock the whole drawer of knives onto the floor. You have plenty of weapons to <laughs> kill someone. Let me, uh, I'm just gonna run screaming like somebody, like a girl from the '80s <laughs> horror films. And it's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? Take a knife with you. Even if you're running out of the house, take a knife with you. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I don't know. But I would. I will Those say that spry killers. Yeah, really. They, well, there was multiple, so they, they had chance. I, I will say that the the I thought the COVID was just going to be a setting because you know for the first half of it, it's it's not really it's just it's almost like scenery for the the story. You know, to get the two people by themselves, and I thought it was just being used for that. But once it becomes more integral to the actual plot and the reasoning mm -hmm. in the back, I I was really I I I thought that was pretty pretty slick i really liked how they did that i, I mean that, to me that's that's the that's the only sort of i hate to say use the word but ingenious part of it is mm -hmm. how they worked the whole covid thing into the slasher element because that because then it's like oh this makes kind of perfect sense and you know like brown was saying the people were people are still nutty but people are very nutty around that when people are fighting for fucking toilet paper right. and uh and so like for these you could see parents they, if they've lost a kid I'm not, but I, I, at the same time, I don't know if you get your whole family unit to do <laughs> stuff. Uh, but I, I will say, like that father is definitely a very uh, healthy dude. If he's kind of uh, fighting off people and falling down and like, swimming, swimming across a freaking lake. <laughs> okay, there's the there's the yeah suspension of disbelief there because the, la like, the lake scene I I thought was a little. Much. I mean that was that was yeah they were definitely doing then, Friday the Friday the Thirteenth there but he's wearing the mask he's not taking it off so and it's got to be weighing down on him I don't know well just... I, I I I was thinking <laughs> maybe it's just the filmmaker in me but like when when they're at that that road and I he's like walking I just his shoes should have been squishing Squeaky, yeah <laughs> well, <laughs> there should have been more sound design he should have been more wet right it, it could have been the mom though it could have it may not have even been him in the water. No, his, the the mom was. She was driving. She, she was in the car. Well, she was driving, but she could have changed. Never mind. I'm just. I don't, I don't I'm just. No, I don't I, I'm. I, I'm reaching. I'm trying to make. Although, no, that, right although there. I was like, why are they dressed like ninjas? <laughs> but she wasn't. You know, I she, wanted them to be more ninja. <laughs> <laughs> like throw some throwing it, stars or something. Was it a prom night reference? It's like I feel like there was a lot in there, you know, that they were mm -hmm. just throwing in there because they they had that the prom night feel too. In terms yeah. of how spry the, they were. The, they, 
yeah. And there was some there was some fun kills. Of course, most of them are the. I, they should have had I, like I, a skull mask or something just to have fun I, with yeah, mask. Yeah, you know. they should have like yeah, or or just wear like a like a an actual like medical mask with like a smile on it or something. Oh, yeah. I mean, there's so many opportunities to create a killer with that, you know? Right, the ones right. With the faces, yeah. Like ninjas. yeah, yeah. They should have, yeah, if they, if they, maybe because we didn't have those at that point, but yeah. They, well, the, the girl had one that had like the medical thing on hers. Oh, okay. So. Yeah, yeah so. That, that's, Maybe that's a con right there. They should have had that. <laughs> oh, well, that's then, just, that's just it, me trying to market something you could sell. Cause yeah, then, exactly. Because then yeah. you could tell the difference that, oh, there's two killers. You know, if you see them at one in the distance as a smile or something. But I, I, well, yeah. Maybe that the fact they didn't was... Well, and I think, yeah. Did, so you automatically make the assumption there's only one as opposed to right. two or three. Although I will say the, the, <laughs> the way the mom dies at the end, I was... I don't know why I found that to be laugh. Oh, I oh, laughed that was, at that. It that was, was fantastic. So, it was just so good. It was very, uh, it felt almost David Lynchy, and I don't know, it was something the way the camera was well, just following it was... That and just like, ah! It was, just, it, just, it was so goofy. <laughs> Great gag, though. Good, long, good, long, good long. nice long gag, yeah. No, I was like, oh, man, they got this stunt person. This is like a, a very long a fire <laughs> stunt. Yeah. Although I, I kind of think that they, <laughs> the police probably would have forced them to <laughs> Two girls to be on the ground. And no, no, be reality. Uh, <laughs> you just have somebody caught on fire. <laughs> Do we think Mary is? Uh, does she have COVID now? Is she is she safe? Oh, so she was hanging. Oh God! <laughs> I mean, she's she's with her her friend. I like the part where she's dancing true. and she's just spraying all around her. That was yeah. That she's was so a funny paranoid. quirk of her of her character, especially yeah during the dance scene. I thought that was pretty funny. Um, oh no! Well, I, I didn't. I found it to be like I think you would be. You're in an enclosed room spraying, <laughs> spraying this uh, 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 disinfectant. I think you you might choke out. out from fumes. <laughs> that's that's what I was thinking. That's kind of stupid. Why do you keep spraying that around? I know it. It it felt. I don't know. It felt authentic though, even though yeah, it didn't feel very well, smart. I, I but... felt everything was authentic because I, I again I I remember <laughs> cleaning. All the food products and doing because all of what kid at the beginning to, like wipes down or, or even Cheerios or something. Well, even <laughs> when the, the the very beginning when the guy comes to the the uh, the grocery store and he gets out the, the 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 hand disinfectant and does that, I was like, I don't know how. I remember I was like, man, I, I'm having PTS post COVID <laughs> post pandemic syndrome or something watching that. He did give up the last uh, tissue to the lady with the pink kid though, so good for him. <laughs> I recall hearing someone out in my hallway like coughing once, like getting off the elevator, and I just, I that was, I got the Lysol just sprayed at my door like it was a, like it was a, like it was a force field. <laughs> <laughs> Do not bring your evil here. Uh, one thing, not, one thing I was trying to figure out is, is this, is this the right side paranoid at the left, or is it the left side paranoid at the right? I, I'm a little confused. What do you, what do you think politically this is? I don't I know if it's saw all different. Uh, go ahead. I, I just I saw all different. Yeah, it's kind, I don't of, it's kind of mixed, cool. right? I don't think it's really political. I think it's just more. Um, so I, I was trying to figure out they're doing like vaxxers, anti-vaxxers, and then those that would shelter in place, and others that would get a little. I mean, know, they're definitely in the in the in the group of people that like you need to not go out and you know, do whatever. But at the same time, it's also one of those situations to where you don't know, you don't know their background. Maybe they were anti-vaxxers until their kid well, got maybe. killed. Maybe that's and then why they, they, died, and then they right? blamed. Yeah. So <laughs> we don't really know the background of their belief system of our medicine before this, other than their kid died because of COVID because the kid went to this party. And, uh, but yeah, it, it, it does. I mean, it, it is that traditional type thing that we've seen in slasher films of your, you know, <laughs> Like you, you, you killed my kid, so I'm gonna take everybody out who who caused this kid to die type situation, which is the most of your slashers from the '80s. Always the you know, the geeky kid dies or something, and then goes after, and other people go after him. So mm -hmm. I thought I thought Jane Adams played Pamela like a school teacher that would actually kill you when you did something wrong. <laughs> it's just, it was kind of like you know how so calm she was and the way you know chloroform. She would go like Jason mask. <laughs> And you right. step back. And was... Well, well, also when she's uh, uh, even doing the the COVID tests, <laughs> the little oh, bloody was, swab. Oh, oh my god! That, <laughs> and she's being all calm. Let me. We have to wait for it to finish. <laughs> Thirty minutes, Jason. 
Oh man. Uh, yeah. So there were, there were moments that were really slick and that's Kevin Williamson, right? That's what he does. Right? Well, I guess, well, now it makes perfect sense that Jason went into the water. <laughs> Oh, stop. <laughs> yeah, I, did, I did not, I did not catch it was painful. Although I will say it's that fun. that scene on that little floating uh, dock thingy or whatever, I was, <laughs> I was in the fetal position watching that. I was like, oh, I was like, it was a good set I, piece. I, yeah. yeah. I was like, that's a really good, I was like, how I, I kept thinking, well, maybe if she put her feet certain ways, I know, I was trying to figure out how to on the board, uh, she'd have to balance, you know, otherwise. And she did get yacked right between the fingers. So. I knew that was coming. Yeah, Ugh. something, something had to, right? All but right. it was just like, how is he breathing? Was he breathing? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Well, I guess it was room underneath. Yeah. To yeah, yeah. I, did, okay. I didn't. Yeah, I was just like, how did he get out there so fast? I guess exactly. You know, this, yeah, without her hearing or something. And then why wasn't he right on top of her when she tore away? Anyway, I, I that was my least favorite segment. There's it, a lot of logic. It might have been effective, but Laws. it was my least favorite. All right, let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's give our score one to five and our favorite scene. Brian, you are up first. Uh, do we do like 3.75? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. I'll say 3.75. Um, favorite scene. I guess I'd say my favorite scene was uh, Jane Adams pulling up in the car because it was so ridiculous and I figured she was just going to be this annoying character and had no idea she was a part of the whole thing. So I thought that whole scene was done pretty well because it, it was the ridiculousness, but also the, the the reality of where's your mask and all that sort of stuff. So I was I was tricked right along with Parker during that scene. So that was that was probably a good scene. Yep. And that thing she goes, oh, I have a mask. She pulls it out of like a right. thing. But you would think no, we, we, we all had that. I've, yeah, I've had yeah. jackets with that still have, you know, pouches and pockets I, filled with them. And I think also the way it was staged, I almost thought, well, maybe she got killed because she just paused for a little bit there. And mm. so I even thought that as well. Oh, right, right, right. Yeah, I was expecting him to like come through the window or something bad to happen, you know. Yep. But uh, yeah, like, like I said, 3.75. It didn't piss me off like certain, I mean, it's a Peacock movie, but it didn't piss me off like certain Netflix uh, streamers <laughs> that will go un unnamed. <laughs> so I was, <laughs> I was, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised by the comeuppances of the, the killers. So that, that, bumped it up a notch for me but um yeah it's it's kind of it's dark it's not necessarily something i'd throw on again like a scream or anything but you know it's fine okay i think it's fair christopher g moore your score your favorite scene um i'd probably give it a similar score 3.75 um i i think um i think i think it's two biggest strengths again are are the the visuals the filmmaking the kinetic filmmaking when it comes to sometimes stitching the shots together um, for some of the action stuff, I think it's got some of the best well done action type th scenes, at least when it comes, to, especially the opening uh, scene with the fight and stuff, mm -hmm. the way it's staged and the way it's shot is it almost feels like one long shot, but it's not. You can sort of see where it's stitched together. And I think that's yeah. And there's several other scenes like that are similar to that as well. Um, how everything is and the staged. kitchen scene. Yeah, yeah, the kitchen scene, everything. Hey, yeah, all, all the staging, the choreography, I think really sells a lot of the the brutality and the things that are happening. Mm -hmm. um, as for favorite scene, um, <laughs> um, I guess I guess how they finally take out the the dad. Mm, very good. Which is the what I'll call the the Chekhov's antlers. <laughs> that which I got so mad, really it's like, what? Though. Why didn't they use? Why didn't that guy use the pointy end of the antlers <laughs> on that guy um, early on? But uh, but then it's like, yeah. But I, I did like the the fact that they uh, used the spray <laughs> as part of the. Oh, the that's right, they did. They did. To, to make them uh, the very thing that we're using against COVID, they use it against this person. <laughs> uh, so I did find that to be very ironic. Is I don't know, irony is the right word for that, but the the but yeah, and the, uh, it was shot well too. The way he fell over and the way they filmed it. Oh it yeah, per perfection. Great. Yeah, I mean, I I, I like the way that whole thing was staged, and I kind of saw it coming. I was like, yeah, I think that the the Chekhov's uh, electric 
Although she had to plug that up. Was it was it battery powered? Uh, it must have been. It had to have been. The electric knife, yeah. <laughs> and yeah. How they used all those elements to sort of the, for this final stage death of this character. Mm, it was nice. Uh yeah, so for me I like I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it a four. I, I it's not gonna be in the top ten, but it might deserve an honorable mention for me. You know, just a, maybe a, an asterisk for the year, you know? It's I um it, I think it's an effective slasher film. So the more you're a, a fan of a slasher, I think you're going to really dig this. Um, I think it's effective. Um, uh, my favorite scene, if you guys aren't going to pick it, I'm, I'm going to pick DJ's demise. <laughs> when he comes out the door and his feet are kind of like marinating across the sidewalk mm-hmm. <laughs> and you find out why. Um, I just, I thought that was so... It was so effective, and they're and there's and they're in the car, right? Well, she's outside the car. The other one's in the car. She's wrong. I'm trying to get in. It was it was tense. It was funny. It was it was gruesome, and and of course it got bloody too when that came out, right? So I I, I thought that was really well staged, really well um, set up because the fight was inside, and he come out the door. So you're wondering like what's happening, and you don't really get it until you get it. Mm. And I I kind of knew what was happening. <laughs> yeah, beginning. well. Uh, yeah, when they don't really show a close up of the of the character, I was like, I know what's happening here. <laughs> but it was good though, right? So. Good thing he uh, foolishly came out there. He saved both their lives. Yes, he did. <laughs> he left the antlers. He left that. You know, he did. My God, <laughs> it wasn't totally. It wasn't totally useless. I guess. I guess not. But again. But use he, your he, weapons, people. Use, Final your, girls, weapons. use your weapons. Use this, your this film, of course, this film probably would have been like forty-five minutes if they actually used the weapons. But yeah, but that, that character was in, was crucial to the story because you know it, it set up uh, the whole background of it, and he had the story about the person to give us that oh, information. So, that's true. I mean, yeah. he, he's what? What do you call that plot? Plot exposition. Plot, no, plot not plot, well, it is a condition. But uh, yeah. Plot convenience. Plot mechanics. It's, it's very, yeah, yeah very close to what I'm thinking of. It's not hitting my head, but there's a word for plot, it. Plot protein. Plot um, protein. <laughs> I, that's pretty much, I mean, it, the same reason that they had the whole thing where like he wasn't answering the door. It was like, I was on the phone. Right. Um, I'm not sure if you'd be <laughs> if you'd making big noise knocking on a door <laughs> if you're on your phone. I know. It's a little ridiculous. But it was, I don't know. It, the guy was so... A bit on the slimy side at work. So, mm. anyway, go watch it. It's on Peacock. Uh, so that's cool. I think. Um, yeah, I, I guess I, I have Peacock now. I signed up for it just for this. Oh, <laughs> I did too. Actually, there's some. I'm gonna watch. Uh, there's a couple other movies that I haven't seen yet, so I'll probably check. There them out you tonight. go. I kind of wish they had season two, of Chucky. <laughs> get that. Get that week I, in I there. Yeah, I saw the first season. I'm looking over at the Blu-rays that I bought, and I'm like, could they just could I, you know, could they have had this on earlier? Yeah, I'm waiting for season two now because I'm just seeing spoilers. Well, season anyway. season three just got announced. So yeah. I heard, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, but there you go. That's our review of Sick. We know you're going to check it out. When you do, let us know what you think of it down below. We'd love to hear your comments, Christopher, Brian. Of course, as always, thank you for joining me. This was so much fun. All right. Good night. Good night. No problem. I'm I'm sick with happiness. <laughs> <laughs> My sniffles are gone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of here. Say good night. Good night. Crusoe Magazine.